Lawrence Young joins us from the UK. He's a virologist. He's a professor of molecular oncology at the University of Warwick. Professor, thanks so much for your time. Just talk us through the Oxford AstraZeneca finding. I mean, I understand that possibly the research hasn't been peer reviewed yet, but the initial findings, how important are they regarding transmission? They look very exciting. So um, transmission looks like it will be reduced substantially, but I think we still need to wait for some more data on that. So there's a hint because of the ability of the vaccine to reduce infection in asymptomatic individuals. So there's a suggestion that that would stop transmission. So that's great news. I think the big result from this, however, is the fact that the vaccine after a single dose is 76 percent um, Infectious in, uh, uh, has efficacy at, at blocking infection and hospitalisation in a very large group of individuals. So this was you know, these were a lot, you know, more than twelve thousand people. So it's really exciting from that perspective, preventing hospitalisation after a single dose. It also demonstrates something that we'd been obviously concerned about was the the gap between the first vaccine and the second. Actually, the bigger the gap, the better the immune response. So there's lots of bits of data in this that give us calls for actually a degree of optimism. Uh, regarding transmission, it's uh, the one thing that is still highly uncertain. Now, there's obviously many other things, but in terms of inoculations and giving people the vaccines, what we still don't know is whether someone who's had it will be able to transmit the virus. If it were to be the case that vaccinations would stop transmission, would that possibly be the game changer in terms of ending the pandemic completely? Well, it would be a significant step in that direction. And I think what goes for the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine will go for other vaccines. If we can reduce the virus load in individuals who are asymptomatic, we'll stop transmission. One of the biggest single problems with this pandemic and this particular virus is that it's spread from people who don't have any symptoms. And that has been very difficult to control. If a vaccine will do that, then that will be a major breakthrough. There had been, regarding the Sputnik V vaccine, lots of scepticism initially, because so soon into the phase three trials, the Russians themselves had given it approval. But now in this uh, paper in The Lancet, which looks at the efficacy of Sputnik V, and examines also the fact that it's very peculiar compared to other coronavirus vaccines in targeting two different aspects of the virus. How impressive is that achievement? I think it's a really, it is a really impressive achievement. The phase one, phase two data was very compelling, but obviously we all work to different regulatory standards across the world, and there was a concern that the Russian vaccine was racing ahead of formal approval. It is a clever vaccine. It doesn't use two different bits of the coronavirus. It just uses two different vectors to deliver the virus. And we know that if you use two different vectors, that you tend to get a better immune response. And it's quite a clever approach, actually. And, it, and it's been vindicated in this, in, this, in this trial where they see almost 92% um, uh, efficacy. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's very compelling, very exciting. And I think the more of these vaccines we've got, the more we can start to roll out vaccination across the globe. And of course, more hopefully are coming. Professor Lawrence Young, thank you so much indeed for your time, Professor.